Today I'm going to show you how to combine generative AI and predictive AI to build your own RFP question answering bot right on the data robot platform. But first let's see what this might look like in action. And so I've got this application open and I've got a little description here. It says this application utilizes generative AI to significantly streamline the manual task of drafting RFP responses by providing an automated first draft for each question. The quality of each response is evaluated using a predictive model, which prioritizes responses requiring additional manual review. To me, that sounds very fancy. So let's just see it in action. Maybe I'll give it a question. Let's say, how do I partition partition data in data robot? Okay, simple enough. Question you might get um, from an RFP. We can see it's generating responses below. And in the next couple seconds, I think we're going to see, yep, a response. How do I partition data in data robot? To partition data in data robot, you need to follow the following steps. Yep, seems about right to me. We can see not only do we get this answer, but we also get reference documentation. And combining predictive AI with generative AI, we also receive a confidence score that can help us streamline the reviewing process, as well as telling us in what way uh, this response might be wrong. But this one looks pretty good. If it didn't look good, we could upvote it or downvote it in order to further enhance our data robot audit model. So, okay, here's our application. How did we get to this point? I said you could do this from data robot, uh, and that's the case. So I'm in data robot notebooks right here, and I'm gonna show how you could build a knowledge base uh, right from this notebook and then deploy it onto data robot. Uh, and just to go over that flow again, we have a question. When we send in the question, it uses the knowledge base to get the relevant documentation to inform the context before it pings the actual LLM. That response from the LLM then goes to a deployed data robot model, which returns a probability that the further review is needed to supplement this answer. And this helps speed up the reviewing process greatly. We've all seen many cases where a large language model spits out, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer, or maybe something that's just flagrantly wrong. Okay, so what do we do within here? Well, we can see I'm in our notebooks. Our environment is managed. We're actually on our GPU resources right here. And I go in, um, choose the content for my knowledge base, which in this case is our data robot documentation, our trust package, and some historical answers to some RFPs. I then define what content we need for our actual vector store and our embedding model that we use to get the context. And then finally, I define the actual hooks we use when we wanna say, get a prediction from that knowledge base. So right here, we say, how do we load the model? And when I say score unstructured, what actually happens behind the scenes where we ping that LLM using our vector database. And deploying it's simple. We just say what we wanna deploy, what our hooks are, and just like that, we'll have a deployment. And from this deployment, we can pass it a question, just say, predict unstructured. Just like before, I say, how do I partition data in your platform? maybe a little bit differently worded, but you can see we get a pretty satisfying answer right here. So okay, you can use data robot notebooks to, to build a knowledge base and to ping that knowledge base and deploy that knowledge base onto data robot, but that's only half the picture. How do we get to the audit model? Well, getting there is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is generate answers to a list of questions, label those answers, and then build your predictive model, just like you would on any other data robot project. So here, you can see I've done exactly that. We've got this list of responses generated by our context-aware large language model and our taxonomy right here, defining if they are correct or incorrect in a couple of different ways. And the great thing about Data Robot is once you build these models and you have this uh, leaderboard right here, ranking them against each other, telling you how good they are at actually auditing our knowledge base, it'll also tell you why it thinks um, something might be correct or incorrect. For example, here we have our class insufficient knowledge base or vague prompt, you know, something that might say, I'm sorry, but the given context does not give me enough information to answer this question. Well, look at what indicates this. Information, context, sorry. Good job, data robot. So we've built this model here. Deploying it can be done in just a few clicks. And in addition, data robot also lets you define your own custom metrics to attach to a deployment. So here, I made some functions to measure things like toxicity, the cost of pinging the LLM, the tokens used, how many responses were deemed informative, which I can just easily send via API call right to the affiliated deployment. 
Last thing I want to show, uh, another way that you could use this combination of generative AI and audit model is via chatbot that you could use even right in Slack. So over here, we made um, our application into a little bot. So I asked it uh, earlier today, hey, RFP bot, how do I partition data? And we got an answer to a question as well as the verdict and some measures of confidence that it might be right or wrong. Our CTO responded to this question and uh, he said, how don't I partition data? Which I think is a little bit of a silly question, but I think it gave a satisfying answer anyway, recommending that you really should partition data in your machine learning models. Uh, so that's it, generative AI and predictive AI working hand in hand.